Thanks, Rungu. Uh, how's it, Jake? Um, that's a thumping win um, on the scoreboard, 45-9. I guess it's a good thing, though, that it wasn't a perfect performance. That you must, you must be thinking that there's still room for improvement. There were, you know, there were a few handling errors. There were, there were periods when um, just the continuity wasn't really there. Yeah, Ken. Okay, nah, yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, the first half we, we struggled to get any rhythm. Every time we got to sort of two, three phases, we either got slow, slow, slow ball. You know, which obviously difficult to play from, or we turned it over. You know, we lost it in contact or they managed to, you know, get a penalty for, you know, for us not uh, releasing the ball. So, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, we chatted in the half time about it. We said, look, what we need to do is maybe stay up a little bit longer. Don't go to ground so quickly because I thought they were really hard on the ball every time we went to ground. Um, but as I said, we had to work hard for that result. I mean, it's not, it sounds like a really one-way performance, but, you know, you know it, uh, we probably gave them a good start, three, four penalties in a row, played into our half, you know, then we defended quite well to get ourselves out of that half. Um, but that's the thing I suppose I'm most pleased about, Ken, it's just the way we defended today. There seemed to be a mindset about, you know, making sure we didn't get them to, to get any gain line. Last week we were soft, probably had too many soft moments where we let teams go through the middle of us. And this week, uh, you know, again, it's, uh, it's pleasing when you defend like that. Follow-up question, Kenny? Yeah, yeah, Jake, I, I was just going to say that, I guess, uh, restricting Cardiff to just nine points, that, that's what really makes it a something win, was that they they had opportunity, they had a, quite a lot of possession. Yeah. Um, but you must be really pleased with the, the defence out there. I mean, th th it looked like they were trying to target you out wide a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, they more look quite good. Um, but you guys... I mean, you're actually really pleased with how the defence handled those things. Yeah, yeah, well, I am, Ken. I, you know, you're right. A lot of ball, a lot of opportunities. You know, I just got no doubt that when you have Kane and Moody defending on the edge there, he just understands everything. You know, it's unbelievable that he shows a maturity he does defensively. And those tackles he makes when he has to close the gate, you know, when he has to wait, uh, he, he makes the right call as well when he sees they've got numbers on him. So... Yeah, it's nice. I mean, him and him and Kurtley obviously understand each other well. They play well together and they cover that section of the field. The thing I was also pleased about is we lost David Creel early and then Cornell defended really well on the edge as well. So, yeah, it was, as I said, it was a 45.9 uh, win. I don't think that it's a true indicator of everything. I think they're a much better side than that. I mean, they showed it. They beat the Stormers and the Sharks. Um, so, it's a, you know, it's, for me, it's a... It's a bonus in that they beat two South African sides. We got a bonus point, five point winner. Yeah, that's a that's a massive swing in the competition itself. Cool. Thanks, Kenneth. Jan. Jan. Thanks, Linga. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry, Jan. Jake, yeah. Jake, I think. I know there's there's always the, sometimes we get a bit too pedantic. You know, there's a little bit of discipline issues and stuff. But I think the, the, the one thing that came through, and, and I think you spoke about it in the build-up, is that back three of yours, when they start clicking, it, it could be, uh, I suppose, frightening for the opposition, but a, a real pleasure to watch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, geez, I mean, you say it without, I mean, that every time they kick the ball and Kanan catches it or Kurtley catches it, you can just sense even the crowd, no, here we go, something's going to happen, you know. And uh, when you combine that with guys like, you know, uh, Cornell and and Lionel and you know obviously Harold and and Huerson when he's on song like he was tonight, I mean it's fantastic. I mean the challenge we now have is that we've got to make sure we give them good ball on the front foot. And and I said it just now. I think the beginning we couldn't get rhythm. We got a lot of slow ball. Uh, every time we got a couple of phases, it was like we couldn't run onto the ball. Um, and then as soon as we did, as soon as Huerson could run onto it. And he could open up holes and either scored or we put people away, you know. So, yeah, it's it's obviously hell of a pleasing. I mean, I, I think, you know, that's I sort of jokingly said to Willem Strauss now. I mean, that's wonderful Bulls rugby, isn't it? I mean, it's, uh, you know, we can play with the forwards. I know Dai Young spoke earlier. He spoke to me and he said, listen, mass, massive amounts of power. You know, it's interesting. They, they see the power game and that's obviously a massive part of Bulls rugby and something we're proud of. But I think the, the subtleties of our attack and the and the opportunities we create with our backs is also pleasing for me as a coach. 
I think the one thing that strikes me, and you know, I think we had this conversation before, you know, I'm an old school type guy, but the, the instinct that those guys play with, you know, they just look like things come naturally to them. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that little chip kick, I mean, you're just unlucky. The ball bounces the wrong way. Kanan scores another try. You know, then that, then Kurt Lee goes through the hole, chips it, and, and it bounces perfectly for Kanan again. And, you know, that's, that's from a relatively short time together as a combination. So, I mean, it's going to get better and better and better. Um, you know, Johan Christen hasn't played much rugby. He's now just coming back into our team. The more he plays, the more they get to play around him, um, the better. So, yeah, it's a... I'm really excited because I think that we we're not you know we basically not even halfway in the competition and we and we're scoring lots of tries um, and we look dangerous every time our backs get the ball so hopefully we'll just keep building on that. Cool, thanks, Jan. Simon. Thanks, Lunga. Jack, congrats for the uh, win. Um, I. I just want to focus on, on one part of the, of the, of the game that um, I, I picked up. I uh, made a note of uh, especially the breakdowns and the, especially the first half. And then after the second half, and you had Marco there, um, it, 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 it was frustrating for me. And I can suppose it's beyond frustrating for you as well. With the carries sometimes um, Marco had and um, just, just slipping off on the carry. Um, the tackle um, and, and the way, and, 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 and I must credit uh, Cardiff for the way that they tackled also. It is a tackle, a, a man and ball tackle that, that, that um, did a, 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 a very good job. Yeah. Um, is, is, that, is, is that something that um, has peaked out? Is it something that popped out? Is it something that you're working on? Or is it just one of those nights that Marco had? Because yeah. this is not... Um, typical of Marco, um, just just concentrating on that. Yeah, look, Simon. I mean, I think Francois Klopp has lost a couple of balls in the tackle. I mean, a couple of our backs lost the ball in the tackle. I, I, I think the one thing that Cardiff do really well is they load the breakdown. You know, they don't give you any quick ball, and if they have to put two or three guys in there to make it slow, they did it. Now, what that does, it comes at a cost because if you don't slow it down, um, then you, there's space for our backs to attack them outside, which basically happened at the back end of the game. You know, so. I think in the beginning they they were they were good at it. They they loaded it. They made sure they could slow it down, either turned it over or made us knock it on. Um, second half, as they got more and more fatigued, you know they obviously ran out of numbers outside, um, and it was something that we you know, we're going to have to get used to. Some teams will flood the breakdown. Other teams will put one guy in and and put numbers on their feet and try and get off the line and tackle you. So. And I think, you know, as I said, I don't think it was something they, 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 you know, they're very good at the breakdown and they, and they put numbers around the ball. So if you don't hold on to it, you know, it gets turned over. So I don't think it's something that we, we surprised about. Um, it's not something that I think we need to put a red flag out. Um, some of the best players now in our team lost the ball in contact. But uh, as I said, when we did manage to get it out and away from the breakdown, we, we ended up creating space on the outside. So it was always going to be one of those battles. I'm good, thanks. Cool, wonderful. Mubin? Hi, good evening, Jake. Congrats on the victory. Um, just a follow-up on what Ken and Jano say. Um, you must be really pleased with uh, Johan Kors' performance. He's improved quite a lot. And then also, um, just currently, Orenser and, and Ken Woody, the combination was mm. devastating. I felt um, mm. you must be really happy because they bring a lot of X factor, and I think they keep the defenders guessing all the time. You know, yeah, that's quite difficult to defend against them. So you must be really pleased with that uh, yeah. aspect of the game. Yeah, I mean, so firstly, I mean, I think Kusen, as you as I as continue to say, hasn't played much rugby. Probably haven't given him as much opportunities as I have at ten because of the fact that he hasn't been able to train there for long periods of time. He was injured. He came back. Uh, then we used him as a fullback because because we you know obviously needed him more in that position as a as opposed to the next player we wanted to play there, um, especially when we lost our spring box. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the, the, the nice thing is he needs to get game time at 10. Uh, if that's the kind of game he's going to play in a limited time uh, running in the number 10 jersey and in training time, you know, we can obviously be very excited about where this can go to. I mean, but I, mean, I, I know it. Everyone knows it. He's a talented player. You know, it's, uh, I, I can't believe he hasn't played 50 tests for South Africa. 
Uh, but it, it is what it is. And I think what we've got to do now is just get him back into the saddle, play as many times as we can. And, and when he can play like that, that, let's not underestimate the fact that he's so dangerous at 10 creates space on the outside for those outside backs that have got X factor. So, yeah, there, there, there's no doubt that the combination, the more they play together and the more they understand each other and the more they can play off the 10 that can pass and run to the line, which he does incredibly well, the more space that they're going to get, you know. So, yeah, obviously it's, a, it's, it's early days. I mean, it's still a long way to go in lots of competitions. We, as I said, we're not even halfway through. So hopefully we'll just continue to build on that from week to week. Yeah, then to just take a follow-up on that, so what areas do you think you guys sort of need to polish up, um, obviously with you know, still being a long season? What areas do you still think you can still get better? To be fair, Mubin, uh, probably, uh, probably everything. Probably everything. I don't think there's one area that we, that we you know, unlike a couple of, couple of seasons ago, our scrum was under the pump, or a couple of seasons ago, you know, maybe our... Our mauling wasn't as good as it could be. Um, you know, I just think it's a little bit of everything. We just need to polish our game in all areas. Our scrums improved incredibly. Our back our attacks have, you know, incredibly. Tonight we defended, you know, better than we've defended in a long, long time. So I think it's just continual work in Mubin. I don't, I don't think it's one area, you know, that that I, that's glaringly obvious that we, you know, that we. Some guys will say we made a lot of mistakes. Well, you know, the interesting thing about rugby is if you try a lot and you and you and you attack a lot, you probably do make more mistakes. You know, but one thing I don't want to do is go into our shell, not attack. Um, to win this competition, you've got to score tries. I mean, you look at any competition, Crusaders in Super Rugby. You know, you look at any top sides; they've got to score tries to win big competitions. And and you know, thankfully, we we on that right road. We score a lot of tries, and. We'll just tighten up a couple of things, but not move away from from getting our whole game in place from week to week. Cool. And then just my final question, um, Jake, just for the Heineken Champions Cup coming up, um, does your approach change for that, or does it stay the same? Oh, no, no, same, exact same. I mean, when I say same, you've got to score tries to win this competition. In fact, it's probably tougher because you've got a limited amount of games and you've got to get into the top 16. So there's no ways you can win the game by one point, you know, and then lose another game and think you're going to make the top 16. The way the the, the, the competition goes, Mubin, is basically everyone plays two games, and after the two games, the top eight sides in each pool go through. So, you know, I, look, I think you need to win games. Obviously, that's important. But, you know, if you if you if you lost a game and you've still scored four tries and maybe got a losing bonus point for being within seven you can still qualify for the top 16. So, yeah, I've got no doubt that if you're going to win this competition or give yourself a fair crack, it's going to be the same rules that apply. You're going to have to score tries. Thanks, Jake. Great, no problem. Cool. Uh, Simon. Simon. Hello, Jake. Simon, you're in Cardiff. Can you hear me okay? Yes, no problem. Thanks, Simon. Great to see you again. Um, just a quickie. Um, last couple of seasons, you had the likes of Cardiff, Leinster, Glasgow added to your fixture list. Now, I look at it now, and you've got Lyon and Exeter. It, it's um, it's a new experience again. Can you just maybe, because everyone here is quite excited about seeing you in the in the European Cup, and what's the kind of anticipation there about new challenges again that you've got coming up? Uh, look, I mean, I think, to be fair, we probably, uh, as a group, and I, and I say this, we probably a little bit, uh, not myself included, because I've coached overseas and I coached at Montpellier and I know what this Heineken Cup or this European Challenge is. You know, even whether you're in the Challenge Cup or whether you're in the Champions Cup, it's a tough competition. So we're probably a little bit naive, and I'm talking about from a supporter base point of view or maybe from a young player point of view in just how intense this competition is. You know, if you look at, uh, you know, you look at the kind of teams that come running out every weekend. It's literally a test international in every position plus the, the bench. Uh, we 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 long off we long off from that. I mean, as a Bulls team, we we don't even have Springboks in every position yet. You know, I'm talking about we're obviously very gifted in and certain positions, but you know, it's not like across the board we can put a Springbok uh, or an international player like the the overseas sides can. You know, whether it's a South African or a Kiwi or a, you know Samoan or Fijian. I mean, generally the depth of those teams is much stronger than than the South African teams. But saying that. Um, you know, obviously I've tried really hard in the last couple of weeks to to explain to them how tough this comp is, and I'm talking about specifically the European Cup. I've explained to them how seriously these teams take it, um, you know, how physical it is. You can play against a pack that weighs a thousand kilograms, you know, and that's just completely different to what we've ever going to be experiencing uh, in, the, in the past since we've been a group. 
But I, I think once the, once the the sort of games on TV, Simon, I think the whole public and everyone will understand the enormity of it. Yeah, we've you know a lot of our supporters have watched the Claremonts play and the Racing Metros play, and obviously Toulouse and La Rochelle's and you know all the top sides, Leinster. We we obviously see Leinster and those sides in our URC, but. When you when you see Clermont Ferrand playing and they're on fire, you know in 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 Clermont at, at home, or you know you see how a, a rampant Toulouse side cut you apart in Toulouse, or you know Saracens when they've got all the internationals, how how good they can be. Um, I, I'm thinking that after next weekend there'll obviously be a massive mind shift from from the average supporter that will see, you know that's a, just another level. You know it's like it's like I suppose championship football. You know people talk about I follow a bit of football and. A lot of players want to play in, in clubs in the UK that play championship football. And the reason for it is they want to measure themselves against the best players. And I think there's no doubt that having having coached at that level, it's just, I mean, it's international. It's basically one level down from international. And I can tell you, not a far level down. It's, uh, you know, the only reason is they don't play in international jerseys. Uh, it's, ex it's exactly the same players playing in different colored jerseys. Just lastly for me, I did an interview with Gareth Edwards this week and He's, he reckoned that the Bulls would be on kind of a revenge mission for the South African rugby after what Cardiff did to the Sharks. And Dai himself said that he's probably, that result last week almost put them on the radar. Did it almost make you redouble your efforts this week? Because they obviously showed they had something about them last week and they yeah. gave you a strong game tonight for the first half, didn't they? So, Simon, let me firstly say, won't you please pass on my best to Gareth? I mean, I, I know him well and, and he's a good friend of mine. And, and look, I'm sure, you know, he was played, played enough rugby and understands rugby enough to know that sometimes when you, you look at the fixture list and you see Cardiff have won two games against top South African sides, they beat the Stormers and, and the Sharks. You know, I didn't have to say anything. I think the reality was whether it was revenge or not. I mean, we play in a conference where we need to win it. And when a, a certain team rolls over two South African sides, you get a, you obviously get a chance to to jump up the ladder because you can imagine it's almost like a nine point swing. Um, so yeah, I mean I don't think it was so much a revenge thing. I think we also realised uh, from last season. Remember we played Cardiff in Cardiff, and we were actually down for a long period of time. And I think we lost yeah. uh, Johan Kuhlsen with his knee injury as well. So it wasn't ideal last year, and we know how tough it was to beat them. So. Yeah, definitely not, definitely not a revenge chat, but I think I was quite fortunate in that when the players saw what happened last week, they realized if you don't get it right, you can lose to Cardiff, you know. And let's not forget, they also beat Munster in the first round as well. So, I mean, they've got three really big sculpts this season. And so, yeah, as, as I said, I didn't really have to say much. I think the, the players realized that that's either make or break because if you get it wrong, you can lose. Well, I thought your, your side played some great stuff, so well, well done, and thanks again for your time. No, thank you, Simon. Thank you. Cool. Uh, if anyone online wants to fire more questions on um, Hennigan Champions Cup, we will take a five-minute breather so that the uh, guys who are here physically can ask their questions, then we'll come back to you. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Thank you. I just like to inquire about now on the new on Kusum and, um, and the Hennigan Cup. Uh, yeah. Just how... Just how Important to you to get a uh, to get him as a as a really um, top class flyer yeah. to get on top form before the Hennigan Cup starts. Yeah, look, I don't think I don't think it's a, and I don't want to give too much away, but it's irrelevant what he does next week. The reality is, I need to have him running at ten as many times as he can, whether it's a training or whether it's in a game. Um, so whether he plays next week is is one issue. If he doesn't play, he needs to train as much as he can at ten with people around him that he's going to play with in, in the future. So the reason I think that he's, and I'm not saying he struggled, the reason that he probably hasn't been able to click is because I haven't given him enough time at 10 at training. You know, when you had Chris Smith, who's playing really well, I let Chris run as many times as he could there because mm. I wasn't sure if I was going to lose Johan to the box or not. You know, there was there was talk just before the box tour that he was the only fly off that could play. He was the only guy that was going to get selected. And so I was under the impression that if he gets selected, I, I, I've got to find a, a plan B. You know? So it probably didn't work out for him the last month. He didn't play as much as he would like. He didn't probably play, you know, he didn't play at 10. I had to play him at fullback, so I'm also to blame for that. But I think in the next couple of weeks, you know, especially with the games we've got coming now, I need to let him play as many times with Zach and with Ambrose and, and obviously with Harold and Cornell and, and Lionel so that he can get you know, some game time and some training time under his belt. Then, then just a few words about Promis. That yeah. He, I mean, look, he, he's blown away, isn't he? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, he's, 
been out for about seven weeks, eight weeks, comes in, line outs 100%, you know, scrumming, fantastic, ball carries, fantastic, breakdown, we want a crucial breakdown on the halfway line there. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a very important player for us, Chris. And I think, again, it's just what he does. I mean, you bring a guy like Kanan in, you bring a guy like Kirtley in, they get all the, you know, the flashy stuff, and that's how they play. But, geez, I mean, a guy like Krubis, no one said a word about him. He's just come back from eight weeks of injury, and he's like, he looks as though he hasn't missed a game. Who? John Dobson. Oh, yeah. yeah. The other coach. Yeah. <laughs> he said for the next six to eight weeks, yes. they're going to play their strongest team bar one or two players. Yeah. Um, the same from you guys? Or you, no. You still no. no. Just because John Dobson does it doesn't mean the whole world has to do it, Carl. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, he can do, I mean, he's obviously been very fortunate. He's been able to change that. He can say that now because he's been able to play all the other guys the last two weeks, you know. So had he played his strongest side and had all his spring box back, I'm sure he wouldn't have done the same thing. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've obviously got to look at where we want to be in the next six, seven weeks. We've got a massive game against the Stormers in the next URC fixture. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, as I said, I, I obviously understand why he has. He's been fortunate, and I say it again, you know, he's been able to play a lot of players in the last two weeks that, he, that he's been able to give opportunities to. I haven't been able to do that because of the of the competition of where we are and who we're playing against. Um, but going forward, I mean, I I don't I'm not going to use the same I suppose the same recipe that he's going to use because we don't have the same luxury. You know, I think they've got five World Cup winners in their starting team as well, which is very different to what we have. Um, yeah, let's let's just see what happens. I I need to get through. 